It's time to transport some coals and make some snowshoes, so stick around. Over the last 48 hours, this area received nine plus inches of rain. So you can imagine everything is soaking wet. All right, so we got some fungi here. Oh, oh. Now after all this weather, lots of rain. This is still dry as a bone. This will work perfect for holding an ember. I'm gonna go ahead and start <clears throat> collecting some dead freestanding wood that we can use for kindling. Got a good amount of resin here. All right, so now I'm gonna prepare this fungus to receive a spark from my ferro rod. So I basically just expose the surface area by breaking it down with my fingers, and then I'm just gonna use my ferro rod to throw the sparks into the center of the powder nest. Bam, three straps. So now I need to make my ember a traveling case. So I'm collecting some of this bark, and it's perfect because it already has this cylindrical shape. And what I'm gonna do is fit them together like puzzle pieces, and then I'm gonna wrap them in artificial sinew. And you may notice that this bark is a little bit damp, which is perfect because then the ember will stay within the container and it'll be discouraged to burn out throughout the walls of the container. So now I'm just finishing it up, wrapping it in some sinew. And there is my traveling case ready to go whenever my snowshoes are complete. We're gonna be going through some deep snow and we wanna transport this ember with us. So we're gonna quickly make some snowshoes out of some of these alder branches that we have already cut down and Ian's kind of already cleaned up for me. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna match up this alder branch to this one and two branches make one snowshoe so I need two more so making snowshoes is relatively easy so what you're going to do is use the thinner lighter part of the stick for the front or the toe of your snowshoe and the thicker heavier part of the stick towards the back or your heel then you're going to cut yourself two pieces of material that are even the exact same size One's gonna be for the toe placement of your boot and one's gonna be for the heel placement. It's basically a platform that sits on top of the snowshoe. But before you lash that down, you're gonna to have to find the balance point um, of your snowshoe. So use your finger and find where it basically balances like a teeter-totter or a fulcrum point. Now you can lash everything down on all four corners and then you're gonna lash the heel on the very back. And you can see Ian's finding the balancing point for the other snowshoe. So now that I got that all lashed up, I'm gonna start working on the other one. It's the same process again. Ian already found the balancing point. I'm lashing all four points on there, getting the platform. Now I'm doing the heel. And now that we're finished with that, we can start adding the, um, the flex into the front. So Ian's helping me with that and I'm yeah. lashing that down just to bring the toe up. That way I, the toe doesn't dig into the snow as you're walking. So we're gonna follow that process onto the other shoe too. And again, we're just using artificial sinew throughout this entire project. Just so easy to have a spool in your backpack or your day pack and using it for all types of bushcrafting projects. So now we're using really thin and light pine boughs that we've sustainably harvest um, low growing limbs. And we're weaving them through and just lashing them down again with some artificial sinew. And that's pretty much the completion of the entire snowshoe. So our snowshoes are complete. Now we're gonna transfer our coal into our container. That way we can move it. So 
So after all this rain, the snow really is soft and I really do need these snowshoes. So now it's time to lash the snowshoes to my boot. And I'm only lashing my toe to the front platform seating. That way my heel is free to move up and down and it's like a lever almost from my toe being lashed down and my heel being free. And that's gonna allow the heel of the snowshoe to drop down and the toe to lift up. Now your first couple steps in a primitive pair of snowshoes is always gonna be a little wonky, but I quickly got the hang of it. And I actually grew to really love these snowshoes, so I climbed a hill. Wow. Look, you got so much traction too, that's gorgeous. And then with Ian cheering me on, I decided to climb another hill. And as you can see, these snowshoes really do work fantastic. They're not even breaking through the snow a little bit, going up or downhill. So I was just absolutely amazed because we really struggled hiking all the way into this point to film this video. Um, neither of us brought snowshoes and we weren't planning on filming a snowshoe video, but this really worked great. Look at Ian struggling. All right guys. So I'm Chad Keel, Ian Ferguson, and that's how you make snowshoes in the field and transport a coal. Hope you enjoyed. Tune in for the next video.